meeting for the 12th of May 2020, which I now declare open. Although it's not possible for members of the public to join us in person tonight, our meetings remain open to the public by the live streaming on our website and I extend a warm welcome to those who are watching. So on behalf of Moonee Valley City Council, I'd like to respectfully acknowledge the land on which we're all meeting, that of the Wurundjeri Wurrung people of the Kulin Nation and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Councillors, I've not received any apologies for tonight's meeting. Um, however, I will remind councillors that Councillor Serace has an approved leave of absence for tonight. Now, councillors, can I please have a mover and a seconder that the minutes from the council meeting held on Tuesday, the 5th of May, 2020, be confirmed? Moved, Councillor Sipek. Seconded, Councillor Lawrence. I will put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. Now, does any councillor have any conflicts of interest on any item on the agenda this evening? No, thank you. Presentations, I do believe we have a presentation tonight from Councillor Nation. Thank you, Mayor. Just briefly, I would like to make note that this Sunday, the 17th of May, is Ida Hobbit Day, which is the International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia, Intersexism and Transphobia. This day raises awareness on the violence and discrimination experienced by members of the LGBTIQ community worldwide. Council usually marks this day annually with an internal and external event, but obviously due to the current pandemic, that is not possible. Instead, I would encourage fellow councillors and community members to wear some purple this weekend to mark this day. You'll note I'm rocking a purple tie and a purple jumper and to include messaging on your social media where appropriate. Over the past eight years, Mooney Valley Council has emerged to be a local government leader in this space. And we are actually on the cusp of formally adopting our fair action plan, which is the next step in our journey of making our city an even more inclusive and accepting city with equality at the forefront. So thank you, Mayor, for allowing me to formally recognise Ida Hobbit Day this evening. And I encourage all community members to jump onto the Mooney Valley website to have a look at our fair action plan and to celebrate the fantastic work council is doing in this space. Thank you. Very well spoken. Thank you, Councillor Nation. Were there any other presentations for tonight? No, in that case, we will move on to petitions and joint letters. And I believe we have two petitions uh, being tabled tonight. Councillor Cusack. Thank you, Mayor. I have a petition from uh, residents and uh, people who live nearby in Fenton Street, Ascot Vale. The petition has 43 signatories and uh, they're requesting council to replace the existing trees uh, that predominate along that street. Uh, Malaleucas, uh, commonly known as prickly bark, uh, prickly paper bark trees and, um, and Queensland, bo Queensland boxes. Uh, with, and the, uh, the request is that they re be replaced by either ornamental pear or crepe myrtle trees on Fenton Street, Ascot Vale. The request is for financial, safety and aesthetic reasons and uh, re referencing Mooney Valley Council's tree management plan 2018 to 22, electric line clearance management plan 2019 to 2020 and nature strip landscaping policy. Um, recommendation is that the council receive, resolves to receive and note the petition regarding the replacement of trees in Fenton Street, Ascot Vale. Refer this matter to the general manager city development for investigation and reporting back to council and advise the petition organiser accordingly. And Councillor Cusack, you're moving that? That's what I did. Yes. yes. And can I please have a second for that petition? Councillor Marshall. And I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. And I believe, Councillor Sharp, you have a uh, petition. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a petition regarding abandoned, unused 
and unregistered cars on Knight, Aberdeen, Hedwig, Buckley and Vida Street, Aberfeldy and Essendon. So I would like to move that council resolves to receive and note the petition regarding abandoned, unused, unregistered cars on Knight, Aberdeen, Hedwig, Buckley and Vida Street, Aberfeldy and Essendon. Point two, refer this manager to the group manager, refer this matter to the group manager, regulatory and city compliance for investigation and reporting back to council. And point three, advise petitioner, petition organiser accordingly. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Can I please have a seconder for that petition? Councillor Gauci Marici. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. We now come to public question time and we have received two questions for tonight's meeting. As we do not have residents in the public gallery, I propose that we move to suspend the provisions in our meeting procedure protocol, which requires the questioners to be present in the gallery. That will enable me to read the questions that have been submitted in advance and to ask CEO Brian Lancaster to read the responses. Councillor, can I please have a mover that council resolves to suspend the public question provisions in its meeting procedure protocol to allow questions from the gallery to be read by the mayor and answered by the CEO for this meeting. Move Councillor Gauci Marici, seconded Councillor Lawrence, put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors. So tonight's first question is from Marina Williams and relates to the report on tonight's agenda titled Response to Petition Columban Avenue Strathmore. Thank you, Marina, for your question. Marina's question reads, my question relates to the officer's recommendation that council take no action on the petition to introduce four hour time limits for roadside parking in Columban Avenue on weekdays. Before asking the question, I would like to highlight that at least one aspect of the report from the officer misrepresents the petition. The officer claims a specific issue raised in the petition is that teachers from nearby schools and public transport commuters park in Columban Avenue. Point 3.2.1, point page 87 of the agenda. The petition made no reference at all to teachers and the concern regarding the parking was both its rising density and its all day nature. My question relates to why the officer's recommendation fails to take into account key aspects of council's own municipal parking strategy. Specifically, according to the strategy, Columban Avenue Strathmore is a category B street defined as being 5.2 to 7.2 metres wide. In reference to category B street, the strategy states that Streets in this category could typically accommodate parking on one side. Clearly, the strategy does not follow for streets and does not allow for streets like Columban Avenue Strathmore to be heavily parked down both sides. Using the strategy's own definitions and recommendations, the acceptable roadside parking capacity of Columban Avenue is half the 48 spaces the officer is using in their calculations and therefore is typically at or above 100% of capacity. And just to repeat, that was Marina's question in her own words. Um, so thank you, Brian Lancaster, CEO, if you could please respond. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Columban Avenue falls into road width category B, which is defined as a road width of between 5.2 and 7.2 metres. Banning parking on one side could be considered given the street category. However, in the case of Columban Avenue, which is seven to 7.2 metres wide, Council presently allows parking on both sides where small passenger cars park along the curb, leaving enough space for passing traffic and local access. This arrangement maximises the supply of parking. Parking on both sides of the roadway is a typical and normal arrangement for roads in this configuration within this municipality. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Brian. The second question is from David Ryan and relates to tonight's item 10.5 Buckley Street level crossing removal post opening traffic study and response to petitions report. Thank you, David, for your question. The question reads, LXRP have continually ignored my requests for information. I have had a meeting on site with them and explained and showed them the issues firsthand so they are well aware of them. I was recently sent a letter saying that they will not be sending me any information I have requested and have basically told me to stop asking them. 
What can council do if the Alex RP continued to shirk their responsibility in this matter? And again, this was a question from David Ryan that I am reading out. Thank you, Mr. Lancaster, if you could please respond. Thank you, Mayor. Council, as you will be aware, David um, holds no jurisdiction over Alex RP. Despite that, council officers negotiated with Alex RP between late July 2019 and mid April 2020 in an attempt to gain access to the post project monitoring study and realise a contribution to address deflected traffic issues into the local road network. To that end, partial success was achieved in that study and was provided in an abridged form and a partial contribution offered by LXRP of $165,500 to undertake some traffic mitigation works following consultation with the community on the scope of works. The Office of Report recommends the Council rights to the Minister for Transport Infrastructure and the Secretary Department of Transport outlining Council's concerns. An option may also exist for you to request the information that you require through a Freedom of Information request. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Brian Lancaster, our CEO, for answering those questions. And thank you to the members of the public for submitting their questions. As we have no reports uh, from special committees, which is item nine on the agenda, we will move to reports. And the first report on the agenda, 10.1, is 12 Pasco Vale Road, Mooney Ponds, lots 1 to 4, 10, 14 to 15, and 21 to 45 on SP031420A. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Nation. Um, I'm happy to move a motion in the form of the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Nation. Do I have a seconder? Happy to second that, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Councillor Nation, would you like to speak on this item? Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. So this application is for an eight-storey mixed-use building comprising of three office tenancies, 40 dwellings and four basement levels of parking. The site is in a high-profile location within the Mooney Ponds Activity Centre and there were no objections to this application from Vic Roads or our internal council departments. I'm not overly excited about this application, particularly in regards to its height and bulk and the limited amount of office space compared to dwellings. However, as councillors, we must assess these applications with respect to the rules that we set. And this application does comply with our preferred height controls on this site. The proposed mix of land uses aligns with the objectives of relevant planning policies within the Mooney Valley Planning Scheme, and in theory, should help create a vibrant precinct within the Mooney Ponds Activity Centre. Our planning team considers this application to deliver a good design outcome for the site and surrounding area. In particular, as previously mentioned, the proposed building height of 25.73 metres meets the mandatory maximum building height of 26 metres within Precinct 8B. Um, it should also be noted, and it is in the report, that the mandatory maximum building height does not apply to service equipment, such as plant rooms, lift over runs, in this case, solar collectors and other such equipment, with all relevant criteria within clause 4.4 of the activity centre zone one uh, is adequately met. Therefore, the precinct objectives to expand office uses within the precinct with accommodation on upper levels and to enable taller and more intense built form in the body of the precinct uh, have all been met. The, proposed, uh, the proposal demonstrates an appropriate level of compliance with the relevant policies and provisions of the Mooney Valley Planning Scheme the architectural response is considered appropriate within the site context and presents a high level of articulation and architectural design. As a council, we have this amazing document called MV2040, which acts as a plan for the future of this municipality. And although this application is big and bulky and not what many may consider is appropriate, our guiding document, MV2040, has that key theme of 20-minute neighbourhoods and the acceptance of a greater intensity of dwellings in major activity centres. 
This is where we want this growth around the major public transport nodes in the already established and built up areas to prevent this exact sort of development creeping into our suburban streets. So councillors, I understand there may be hesitation in supporting an application like this, but as councillors, we need to assess applications against the rules that we have set for this site. Our objectives in our guiding document MV 2040, and to also ensure that we don't just refuse applications for the sake of refusing, as doing so would tie up precious council resources and funds, which we know are already under great strain given the comprehensive discussion regarding our draft budget last week. So in closing, councillors, I would seek your support on this report uh, to approve the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Nation. Councillor Sharp, would you like to speak on this item? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I must say Councillor Nation has pretty much covered everything. So uh, I will just note that I completely concur with all of what Councillor Nation has just discussed and happy to second this application. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Would any other councillor like to speak on this item? No, uh, Councillor Marshall. Um, thank you. So I certainly acknowledge what Councillor Nation said, and I do agree. It's something I've said before myself many a time that if you don't like the rules, you change the rules. And that's why we have to assess this application against it, uh, against what the existing controls for the site are. Uh, you have to query whether it was the right decision to say that uh, eight storeys is a preferred height here. I have some doubts as to whether that is the case. But anyway, that is what it is at the moment. Uh, the development does provide in excess of the car parking and bicycle requirements that uh, were required under the planning scheme. And the reality is that it is highly compliant. It, I've got a couple of concerns and some of them have been addressed through my discussions with officers. Uh, they've certainly had some concern around the use of stackers. Uh, that's often a very significant indicator of an overdevelopment, but in this instance, it's actually limited to the lowest level. And there are actually waiting areas inside the basement to enable queuing, because that's one of the concerns we often have that there'll be queuing in a laneway, which will affect traffic flows uh, out onto the street. But in this instance, that won't occur based on the advice that's been given. Uh, there's also gonna be a, essentially a, a right of way created at the back it's going to be extended so there'll be the ability for two vehicles to travel in that right of way which is important again to prevent that situation where you've got one vehicle stuck there and other vehicles queuing back up into Alexandra Avenue which would uh, given how busy it gets there at times which would cause chaos so that was uh, very important to me from the design perspective uh, from the northern side in particular this is much too bulky again acknowledging the height um, but we also know there are lots of mechanisms that applicants and developers can use architects use in breaking down that massive bulk and I don't think that they've been utilized here as they could have been uh, certainly at the moment I often find when I come up Alexander Avenue I already have that sense of quite a closed feeling and I think that this really will exacerbate that quite significantly uh, the issue of equitable development rights too is an interesting one and I do think that the way this development is planned, uh, despite the fact that on the southern side there is a light well, uh, which is will be designed to let in light when the, the building adjacent on the southern side does develop eventually, which it most likely will, uh, but you have to query whether that light well, if you've got a significant development, will provide light or whether it will actually limit the ability of that southern property to develop and I suspect it will. Um, so um, this is a difficult one for me because I do have concerns and certainly design perspective wise, it's not, I don't think an appealing building. Uh, but having said that, there are few grounds on which to refuse it. So I'll be grudgingly support the motion. Thank you, Councillor Marshall. Would any other councillor like to speak on this? Councillor Cusack. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would like to make a few comments probably more in line with what Councillor Marshall has said and uh, echoing um, Councillor Nation when he moved the motion that um, people aren't 
happy with this except the fact that it complies and that is the hurdle that we've got to get over and I can't see a way around it. Um, and I will uh, make some comments, possibly echoing uh, what Councillor Marshall has said, but uh, first of all, the south side is a serious concern to me of that building. Um, at eight storeys, anything that gets built next to it, by the time light tries to travel down a light well all the way to the ground, it's not going to make that distance. And um, so there is going to be a, a, a theft of light, if you, if you like. The, uh, the north side, I find, is really painfully bulky. And, uh, and it's a concern that it uh, is allowed to be designed like that. I, uh, I am also sure that it's not a very good response to what the whole of the community looks like in will look like in the future. Just note that uh, the entrance to Mooney Valley Racecourse, which is going to be quite substantial and quite extraordinary, I think, um, is going to be uh, adjacent or opposite uh, Alexander Avenue. And, uh, and to think that um, uh, this is a walking area where now there is now an, an overload of cars coming out onto Alexander Avenue. I also worry about the fact that this is not paying a particularly clever uh, um, consideration to what the Mooney Ponds Junction is, uh, how it is a major uh, point in our community, how it, we all know that it takes a lot of time to get through and the frustrations of being a a car, uh, a car owner and driver through there. But but the other side of it is, is that council has made a big investment in trying to look at ways to uh, beautify that and to work with the tramways and to also purchase a property on the junction for the very purpose of greening the junction and making it a better place. I think that if we're talking seriously about the 20 minute cities in uh, and traveling two 20 minute locations, uh, for work and so on like that. Um, this is a sort of building that on a junction like this could have been devoted more towards uh, commercial activity rather than just straight up more accommodation. And I find it very short-sighted. Um, I'll close at that point, but uh, my genuine real concern about it is it's a building that should have been five storeys high, not eight storeys high. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Would any other councillor like to speak on this motion? Oh, uh, Councillor, uh, sorry, Councillor Nation, would you like to close? Um, yeah, look, I, I will note, and I agree, agree with Councillor Marshall and Councillor Cusack um, that probably the, the biggest flaw here is that our planning scheme, our activity centre zone says that eight storeys on this side is okay. Um, it, it will uh, become, uh, at present, the, uh, the tallest building on that eastern side of Pasco Vale Road or Mount Road. So um, definitely I think there is a concern that um, whenever that, that eight-storey limit was decided, it probably, in hindsight, is the wrong decision, but it's what is there um, at the moment. So we just have to assess this application accordingly. Thank you, Councillor Nation. I will put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? Okay, all those in favour? Councillor Nation, Councillor Marshall, Councillor Byrne, Councillor Gauchimarici, Councillor Sharp, Councillor Lawrence, all those against? Councillor Cusack, Councillor Sipek, that motion is carried. Before I move on to 10.2, if anyone heard the ding that was on in the background, that's a 30 second warning. It didn't mean that uh, councillor ran out of time. So um, just for anyone who was uh, listening at home and was unaware of the ding. Um, so item 10.2 on the agenda tonight, 386 and 392 to 98 Racecourse Road, Flemington, lot one PS3344, 64S and lot one TP5536. Sorry, I'll repeat that again. TP553631P. Councillors, do I have a motion?
Councillor Marshall. Uh, thank you. I'd like to move a motion in the form of the officer's recommendation with some additional conditions. So I'll read those out and I might read them slowly and hopefully I'll make sure I get them all. So in relation to uh, a new 1B, and new 1B is to read the incorporation of lighter colour finishes into the building facade. In what will be 1C, uh, where there is seven, actually that should read the location and details of a fully enclosed rooftop bar area with all external openings closed from 9 p.m. onwards in accordance with the blue line area on plan TP23 enclosed bar area plan prepared by HP Architects dated April 2020. Uh, in relation to condition 1Y, a prominent note on all floor and elevation plans stating all noise attenuation measures to protect the amenity of the neighbouring aged care facility and nearby dwellings are to be implemented as required by the endorsed acoustic report under condition 10 of this planning permit. In relation to condition 10, after the words two internal occupants, insert the words the neighbouring aged care facility. In relation to condition 31, I'll read this one out just because there's a few changes. The extended hotel use authorised by this permit, including the sale and consumption of liquor, may only operate between the hours of A, Monday to Sunday, 7am to 9pm, fully enclosed rooftop bar area only. B, Monday to Sunday, 7am to 5pm, Western ground floor outdoor courtyard. C, Monday to Sunday, 7am to 7pm, south facing rooftop bar balcony area and D Monday to Sunday 7 a.m to 11 p.m all other areas of the extended hotel a new condition 38 which reads the development must minimize amenity impacts on car parking and traffic in abutting streets and must not use surrounding streets as pick up and drop off areas or for parking for patrons and hotel guests and new condition 44, which reads the external doors associated with the rooftop bar and outdoor courtyard area must remain closed at all times to minimise amenity impacts on the surrounding area. And finally, just in the notes, a new note right at the end, which reads council will monitor traffic and parking conditions in the precinct during construction and after completion of works. Thank you, Councillor Marshall. And obviously where you've put in letters or numbers, they will all follow through the new letters and numbers. Are all councillors clear with what's been moved? Yes, thank you, Councillor Marshall. Would any, uh, can I please have a second up for Councillor Marshall? Uh, Councillor Cusack, thank you. Now, Councillor Marshall, would you like to speak to the item, please? Thank you. Uh, so this is an application for use as a hotel. It's a five-storey development on that involves alterations and additions to the existing new market tavern which I'm sure most of us are aware of. Uh, in this hotel it's proposed to have 50 hotel rooms and it involves not just the existing new market tavern site but also the site adjacent which was the previous Kmart tyre and auto site which people are probably familiar with. Now I would note that there as and this is noted in the report <coughs> excuse me um, there are some differences to the plans that were advertised and that follows on from the consultation meeting that was held with Councillor Cusack and residents and the, uh, the applicant. And so those differences are, are set out in the report and basically we've got a, a recommendation for modified vehicle access, uh, some internal changes and also changes at the basement level to the layout. Uh, deletion also of some of the rooftop area and a reduction of one car park but the provision of additional bicycle spaces and also some changes to the external design. Now, when we look at developments like this, we obviously need to look at the particular site context and that's really important in this particular instance uh, because when we look at it, it's a large site, so it's over 2000 square metres, which uh, for this 
part of Moonee Valley is a large site uh, and it's certainly not far from Newmarket Station either. Uh, it's a site that has partially commercially zoned land and that's where the existing Newmarket Tavern is. Uh, and that obviously has the existing Newmarket Tavern use. We've also got some quite extensive de developments both east and west, um, some very large buildings and uh, we also importantly too don't have sensitive heritage inf interfaces in direct proximity to the site. Uh, having said all that, uh, one of the things that we have to consider though is that part of this land is zoned GRZ and it also abuts an aged care facility and there are residential properties not far from the property. Uh, so we've got to make sure that where we can we man minimise the ad adverse amenity impacts that could occur through uh, a development like this. And so that's what's been proposed through many of the conditions uh, in this particular application. I would note that the same number of patrons is proposed as under the existing license and permit, and that's important too. So you'll see that in addition to the extensive list of permit conditions proposed by officers, we've added some additional conditions in tonight through this motion. And for me, it was incredibly important to do what we can to protect that Western side, the side that abuts the aged care directly. And that's why we're requiring the external courtyard which is on that Western side near the aged care to be closed from 5 p.m. on, and also reduce the hours of the rooftop bar. Uh, it is important to note too, that this rooftop bar is actually enclosed. So it's not one of the, the standard ones that you think of. And there's just a, a part that is a balcony area. Uh, and it also sits fully within the commercially zoned part of the site. And I think, what we've got here is a balance between enabling appropriate use of that, but also making sure that residential amenity is not affected to, uh, adversely. Importantly, again, no amplified music and live music in the outdoor areas. And we've got a significant number of conditions that actually control any potential noise impacts. There will be a car parking management plan required before the development start, and that will deal with a range of, uh, of issues, which will be important. But you'll note the general condition that we've included or proposing to include through this motion, uh, dealing with the issue about impacts on parking and traffic in the local area, making sure that the streets can't be used as pick up and drop off areas and for pa uh, patron parking. And again, where you've got conditions in a planning permit and failure to comply with those conditions, obviously officers have the ability to take enforcement action, which is important. We've also noted that council will monitor the traffic and parking conditions and we'll review those both during construction but also post-construction and if needs be we can impose restrictions in the local area uh, whether they be parking restrictions traffic restrictions so look on balance given the site context and the combination of the revised plans the conditions proposed by officers but also the additional conditions that we're proposing tonight uh, i'm willing to support the application and uh, this is certainly not one that would be worth rolling the dice at vcat for uh, given how past applications in close proximity have played out and in light of the existing use in the site context. Thank you, Councillor Marshall. Councillor Cusack, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, Councillor Marshall has made a very, uh, uh, sorry, um, comprehensive statement about this uh, development and why uh, she supports it. And um, there are a few uh, a few things I just suppose I want to touch on uh, in seconding the motion. Uh, I think we all recognise that it's not the prettiest building that's going to go up, but it doesn't. It's it's probably a bit better looking than the one that we discussed prior in Pasco Vale Road. I uh, am concerned about it because uh, it doesn't do or pay homage, I suppose, to the stockyard development across the road which has been featured as a, a major piece of uh, architectural brilliance over the years. But this development is also important in the, in the area because it, uh, it tidies up a number of things. First of all, that Kmart tire uh, place has been a problem child for many moons and to uh, actually see something happen there is reasonable. To see uh, business come into the into that part of the municipality that creates jobs, and uh, is not about just accommodation and more um, and more uh, height and so on like that, is very pleasing, and I'm uh, and I'm happy on that score. I also uh, 
uh, have to applaud Councillor Marshall and the hard work that she's done in examining and looking at all of the hours that are of operation. The amenity of the people who live in the uh, aged care facility of St George's uh, next door is uh, paramount here. And uh, so too, uh, the con conditions around time, timing for the opening of the bars and closing of the outdoor areas, really critical. There's an amenity issue that is particular to uh, Flemington, uh, and that relates to the cut period and the racing time and all that sort of stuff. And the last thing that I as a council would like to see is a whole lot of people up in an outside uh, drinking area on uh, Derby night or something like that, uh, yahooing about. So the common sense approach is to bring people inside, suggest that they can enjoy a drink. Uh, if you're staying in the hotel, of course, you should be able to have some hospitality there. And you've also got the opportunity of using the whole of Race Course Road and the uh, beautiful restaurants and cafes that are in there. So this is a handy development in a lot of ways, probably could have been much better designed, but uh, is at the end of the day going to be important for the area and complies with the VCAT. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Would any other councillor like to speak on this motion? Councillor Nation. Thank you, Mayor. So I'm speaking in favour of this motion and thank the mover and the seconder for their comprehensive comments on this application. I also commend their alternative recommendation as it does address some key matters that should ensure this application once built does not come at the detriment of the residential amenity of those that live alongside. Um, I won't rehash the same ground that both councillors have covered, but did want to make a particular note on the importance of respecting these types of applications and the benefit that short stay or hotel accommodation can have on our local economy. So this application proposes a 50 room hotel, which means the potential for predominantly non Mooney Valley residents to stay in Mooney Valley, to dine in Mooney Valley, to recreate and socialize in Mooney Valley and to spend money in Mooney Valley. We have a specific cause in our planning clause in our planning scheme, 1702, which addresses the community's need for retail, entertainment, and other commercial services, and the deliverable of a net community benefit in relation to accessibility and efficient use of infrastructure. Now, I wholeheartedly believe that this sort of application does exactly that, and it also will provide new work opportunities for our residents. Um, our planning scheme also has a specific clause that relates to economic development being clause 2108 and our planners note that this application should contribute to and enhance the Flemington Racecourse Road Activity Centre in terms of investment and employment opportunities. In particular, the extended hotel development and use will continue to satisfy the community's retail commercial services, entertainment and leisure needs through increased accessibility to local businesses, short term accommodation opportunities and a more sustainable local economy. Um, so I'm happy to support uh, this motion or this alternative motion um, and recommend this application. Thank you, Councillor Nation. Would any other councillor like to speak on this item? No, I will put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. Item 10.3 on the agenda is 2 Leslie Road, Essendon, 2 Lorraine Street, Essendon, 149 Buckley Street, Essendon, 151 Buckley Street, Essendon, 153 Buckley Street, Essendon, and Lorraine Street Laneway, change of use to 149, 151 and 153 Buckley Street to allow for the use of an education facility, buildings and works in a general residential zone, partial demolition and construct and carry out works in a heritage overlay, signage, waiver of bicycle parking and alter access to a road zone, category one road. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Cusack. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, I intend to move the motion that uh, has been advertised, but we uh, with some um, some amendments, and uh, they're not uh, substantial amendments. They're more about cleaning things up and tidying up a couple of areas that were need to be tweaked in this uh, in this thing. Oops, Daisy. Uh, the first point that is one is to have one P in the motion, and that reads the provision of a no left turn sign and associated line marking in the right of way at the approach to Lorraine Street. One U, which is a notation stating the outdoor recreational areas must not be used in the evenings. One V, which is the provision of a two metre wide landscape buffer along the northern side of the multi-purpose court and associated screening trees along the rain and Buckley Street where the works are proposed. Under uh, 1Z, there is a, a, a line CC that is to be uh, deleted, amended master plan is required by condition 14. 14 is addressed elsewhere. Um, that issue is addressed elsewhere in 14. Uh, 7A, which reads now, the management of, a, of the car parking areas, including associated signage, line marking, to ensure all vehicles access the site via Buckley Street. Four, uh, in 14, an additional, four, uh, additional point 14B, or well 14B is there, which now reads, no left turns to be made at the approach to Lorraine Street from the right of way. The final change is in uh, point 20. Prior to the commencement of the use of a no left turn sign and associated line marking, be installed in the right of way at the approach to Lorraine Street. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. So just to confirm, 1P, 1U and 1V were added. 1CC was deleted as it was covered in condition 14. 7A was added, 14B was added and 20 was added. So Med, just as a point of clarification, um, Councillor Cusack, I'm just not sure that um, 7A is actually necessary or is the appropriate condition that was intended in this situation. Um, so I just wondered whether we can perhaps seek some advice in relation to that. So Councillor Cusack, this is your motion that you're moving. Did you want to keep 7A in there? Well, thank you. just a minute. I. I'm running out of screens and places to go to here, Mayor. Uh, working from home is just a bit dribbly on that space. That's okay. Um, I think everyone understands in this time. We can, we'll get um, there. So, I would, is, um, is Petrus Barry online by any chance, uh, Mayor? Uh, and I'd like to see, see some clarification from him. In respect Petrus to Barry that. isn't online at the moment, Councillor Cuba. Oh, thank you very much. Um, sorry. Councillor Marshall, so, so there, to confirm there was, your... there was a suggestion in relation to 7A, pardon me. So the if we can just, just oh. one second, sorry, Councillor Cuba. So the point of clarification was... What did was you need whether, clarify? Um, yeah, whether condition like seven A was intended to be included in this motion, essentially, whether given how the motion is now reading and being proposed, that call, uh, that condition was intended. Okay, so Councillor Cusack, were you intending for seven A to be in there? Well, that was the advice that I had, had, had from um, Petrus and from the officers uh, after previous discussions with them. Okay, so you are moving it with 7A. PSO, yes. Yes, okay, thank you, Councillor Cusack. Do I have a seconder for that motion?
Do I have a seconder for Councillor Lawrence? Thank you. Councillor Cusack, um, would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah. Sorry, Mayor. Uh, this is a particularly difficult uh, proposal and project that has been put in front of us because there are a number of uh, large issues that were raised as a consequence of an initial proposal by the um, by the school to develop uh, and extend the uh, class area to include a food technology and hospitality centre. And then there was, as a consequence of that, there were a number of knock-on issues that arose. And one of the other ones was to propose to place, uh, develop a an area for a multi-purpose court and to extend some car parking in the school in order to be able to accommodate teaching staff and the like. The issues that uh, came up with all of that were that uh, the questions that are at the very basic areas around this are, is this an extension of the numbers of young people and students going to that school and the consequence number of uh, increased teaching staff and the likes of that in an area where there is already significant traffic and uh, parking issues related to other schools. There's also issues around previous efforts to uh, tie schools down to a uh, particular number of students and their planning, and that has, uh, has often been um, uh, ignored in a way, and I suppose that's the choice of words, the, uh, and, uh, and the schools have gone ahead and uh, made adjustments and developed themselves without particular reference to the local community. So in this proposal, there, is a, there are those three key big areas. And the way that we're talking about managing them is to allow the school to go ahead now to develop that building and to develop that opportunity for its students in the food and uh, hospitality area. That they can do the building, but they can't move any further forward unless they develop a master plan that at the end of it, that covers off the whole of the facility. And that master plan would reside within our planning scheme. The, uh, the ask in that obviously relates to those other proposed areas around the, um, around the, the uh, traffic movement and the development of those other sites, uh, the newly acquired 145 Buckley Street and those other houses, go, uh, housing blocks going down to Lorraine Street. The, uh, the questions in all of that are, how far does the school go when it wants to develop those areas it it has a potential to do to have a green light to do that uh, under this arrangement but it may choose that through its uh, development of the master plan to stall some of that uh, additional work until such time as they uh, complete their master plan that is a potentially available option for them yeah, as to the area as to the issues with the um, with the, uh, uh, pardon me, as to the issues with the numbers of students, we are proposing that a section uh, 173 agreement be put in place that will, that identifies the number of uh, students maximum number uh, and that, um, that there are, and that the school needs to get that in place also before it can take up use of the uh, of its newly uh, newly developed building, those uh, that is a, a critical part of the uh, of the the steps that are being put in place and, so, and assurances for the community that um, that the school is not going to expand willy nilly. The uh, updated master plan will, uh, as I alluded to, will uh, look at the questions of what is great, uh, what is the demand through the um, 
through maximum school enrolments. Um, details of any future buildings and building envelopes in the area, uh, three-dimensional massing of those buildings and design treatments. We also look at the details of any sporting fields light and lighting, use of lighting and how uh, uh, local amenity is protected. It also will detail the car parking provisions and circulation arrangements and survey, uh, uh, and survey existing mature trees and vegetation. Until that work is done, the school cannot get a certificate of occupancy for the uh, and use for the uh, for those buildings that it's proposed doing. So there is now a partnership that is being developed through this develop uh, through this planning proposal with the school that uh, the city of Mooney Valley can see a way forward to uh, provide the school with the opportunity to expand for the modern era and to provide training for its uh, uh, students in, a, in an area that is, uh, we all know, in, in demand and where expertise in that area can lead to fruitful careers. But on the other hand, we need to absolutely address the question of amenity of the local area. We need to address it in terms of how the school caps its numbers, how it manages its transport into, oh, sorry, the traffic arrangements in and around Lorraine and uh, those other streets that fall in behind that in that neighbouring area, and it's uh, and the interface that it has with Buckley Street, and uh, and so I put this motion to you as a way forward out of a very complex area. We could, of course, have gone down a track of uh, stalling of, of either deferring this for another time, or B. Uh, changing the uh, condition so that the master plan would uh, had to be uh, put in place uh, before any construction was uh, done. That's a lockstep approach. This is the point of this uh, approach and this motion is to actually get a uh, concurrent development of things going. One, the physical side of things, yep. One, the physical side of things through the building, and secondly, to marry that up with the planning at the same time and to pull these together so that uh, the urgency and the need to have uh, extensions and expansion of the school can be addressed at the same time as also getting the, the community uh, needs and addressed as well. So I commend this motion to you. Uh, it's a sticky one, very difficult, and a lot of effort to try and uh, put it together. I commend the people who have worked on it, uh, councillors and, uh, and staff. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Councillor Lawrence, would you like to speak to the motion? Um, I just want to check if that's uh, coming through. Really, thank you. Um, thank you, Councillor Cusack. Uh, um, you're, you're correct in uh, several matters there, and uh, I certainly concur um, with the fact that this is a, a complex or highly complex uh, situation in an area that is probably um, the paramount education sector for, for private school girls in the Essendon Mooney Valley area. Um, and uh, we take into, into account the the big three private schools that are in that area, um, St Columbus being one of them, uh, Lather Hall, which is in Leslie Road, and down the other end of Leslie Road is Park Creek, uh, Henley Essendon Grammar School, uh, Junior Girls School. So we've, we've got a fairly uh, condensed area of uh, dense in, in the sense that it's uh, got a lot of school children, girls in, in the predominance, uh, in, in an area that uh, certainly needs some serious planning and uh, uh, some, some, some highly, uh, shall we say, uh, complex um, results in terms of how we go forward. This is a, um, a, a private school in Leslie Road that is certainly dense in its, in its building structure already. Um, and, and I would say to the point of there is probably a lack of private space um, for, for the uh, school girls that go there. However, the, the plan 
is is providing a five to ten year master plan, probably lacking in a bit of detail. If, if we have to be honest about it, um, and maybe there needs to be more work done in relation to that. And I think um, council officers have indicated that to the applicant uh, in, in relation to that master plan. The section one seven three uh, student numbers is another concern that I have, and certainly I'd like to see um, something a little more concrete uh, in, in the way that. Uh, the school handles that, and, and so the not just council has some surety over the future numbers, but the local community um, can, can be confident that these are the numbers that we're going to have, and the numbers that we're going to stick to, and that uh, uh, the, uh, the community of Mooney Valley, in, in, particularly around that area, has confidence that these numbers won't be um, changed or altered um, without approval or at least some some substantiation from. From council, the uh, other factors, I guess, is the um, the schools contributing to the uh, street street straight streetscape uh, upgrades and uh, providing improved road crossings. I think that's a good move and, and probably one that uh, I think is going to apply to all that, all the schools in the area, not just St Columbus. Um, in terms of the the, uh, the blocks that are, are being developed, there's probably not enough detail there. Um, sure. Today we've we've got a proposal for some uh, feature car parking, um, but uh, I'd like to have a bit more definition as to what's going to happen there in the future, um, and, and 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 where that's going. It, it, again, this is probably something for the master plan to be given a lot more work done to it. However, we've got something on the table, um, and and uh, I, I take um, uh, Councillor Cusack's point that again that it is a complex situation. It's, it's a site that um, is now uh, virtually circumnavigating that uh, um, Lorraine slash Buckley Street Leslie Road area. Um, uh, and uh, that's, uh, it's, it's a proposal that puts something definite um, to a degree on the table. So uh, that's that's probably not, not as much as I need to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Would any other councillor like to speak to this motion? Councillor Sharp. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we've certainly discussed this um, planning application at length and it certainly is a very complex uh, planning application, that's for sure. Um, for me, there are parts of it that are completely illogical. And when something is illogical, I guess red flags are raised for me personally. Um, this application wouldn't be so complex and difficult if there was a master plan, an adequate master plan accompanying this planning permit. Um, schools effectively are businesses nowadays and I just can't understand or fathom how a business um, wouldn't have a 10 year plan and wouldn't have be able to have provide us with a concrete master plan. There is there are vacant blocks of land there now that we can all see. And as per the report, the one house standing on its lonesome for the last however many years has, has now been purchased by the school. So obviously the school has plans for that uh, house and that site, but we don't know what that those plans are because we haven't seen a master plan. And it's just an illogical step to not have those details before we approve a planning permit of this scale and magnitude, well, obviously increasing the size of the school, which I have no problems with. Um, schools in our area, um, they, need, they need as much room as they can get. And um, I'm certainly not here to be standing in the way of that. It's just the process that I feel is, like I said from the start, illogical. And when something stands out like that to me, there's just red flags. So um, I'm in two minds about supporting this, to be honest, because um, I've, I've toot and froed over it, but the master plan is a real sticking issue for me. And I'm concerned that um, we sign off on this in Clearly, we're, there's there's mechanisms in there, as Councillor Cusack has said, um, with the Section 173 agreement and the um, and the master plan before 
before use of the building, but if you've already built the building and then you do the master plan to effectively use the building, I, that's, I don't see the point in that. So um, I'm just sitting and listening to what other councillors say, I guess, at the moment, but um, there's no doubt this is difficult and I just need to have a, yeah, just a few more minutes to think about that, I suppose. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Would any other councillor like to speak on this motion? No, councillor Marshall? There you go. Um, so my concerns echo really Councillor Sharp. So I have no issue with the extension to the, uh, the Slater building, none at all, and would be happy to approve that. Uh, but the reality is what's happened here is a situation where the school did not have or had not purchased the property at 145 Buckley Street. And then that opportunity obviously through this process has arisen and they purchased 145 Buckley. And I have a, a pretty good sense that this master plan uh, would look very different if you'd done a coordinated uh, view of the site and an integrated development. So that's my particular concern. Uh, master plans like this are real opportunities to say, what is this site going to look like over an extended period of time? Uh, they provide great opportunities to make sure you have the right connections, that things that might impact on residential amenity in the right spots, uh, that things that provide benefit for the students in this instance are in the right places and that it all fits together well. And at the moment, unfortunately, uh, again, I think it is because of the late edition of uh, 145, what's happened is that you have something that's very piecemeal and hodgepodge and certainly not if you were planning for best case scenario on the site, wouldn't be what you plan. Uh, there, obviously there are concerns in relation to the student numbers and I support the 173 proposal. I, it's really disappointing that the existing cap was breached and I have to put that out there. It was certainly a concern at the uh, the consultation. And I think because we all really place a lot of faith in schools and we hide, hold them in high regard that we expect them to comply with their obligations. So I certainly hope that that doesn't happen again if this is approved. And uh, I hope that if they were to exceed the cap in any 173 agreement, that the officers would take appropriate action because it would be expected and it would be done in any other situation. Um, my concerns around the appearance of Buckley Street and the Lorraine Street have been addressed through the, the fencing. Uh, so, oh, sorry, through the landscaping proposal. And that was probably uh, partly what I was getting at with my point of clarification earlier, whether that was um, would inhibit and potentially be in conflict with those conditions. Um, but the idea that people would be looking on trees rather than car parks or fencing is much better outcome to me given the prominence of these sites. Uh, and again, the issue around traffic flow back into Lorraine Street, back through the local area traffic network, that was uh, and still is a concern. And I think if we restrict that left hand turnout and push people onto Buckley Street, that that will be a much better traffic outcome for the, uh, for the area because one of the sureties have been a councillor for Murnong is that since at the time I've been a councillor, I know all of us have had numerous comments and concerns from people in relation to parking and traffic issues, not just created by um, St Columbus, but through the whole precinct, uh, given that there are a number of schools in the precinct. I have to note too, I mean, for me, it is a shame that the school hasn't at this stage used it as an opportunity to really promote sustainable transport methods. And uh, there were no bike, requirements in play or bike proposals in place and I think officers have included that through a condition uh, and also having a green travel plan which I think is really important and hopefully will encourage the school to think about different ways of, of uh, getting their students teachers to and from school and there are a range of other conditions that I'm satisfied with and I think will really mitigate some of the concerns around impact on amenity uh, but for me, this, the issue of the master plan goes to the crux of this whole development. And you want the best outcome for the school 
you want the best outcome for the community and you certainly want the best outcome for the people who live in and around uh, the school. So I think that can only be done through having a proper master plan process in place. And uh, so that's why I'm reluctant to support this application as it stands, instead of no issue in principle with the components, but I would really love to see the school take that opportunity to review it, to do a proper master planning process, to make sure that their, um, the significant amount of money that they are going to expend is done in a way that provides the best outcome. And uh, at the moment, I'm not convinced that's the case. Thank you, Councillor Marshall. Would any other councillor like to speak? Councillor Gauch Marici. Madam Mayor, I was hoping to move a slight amendment to condition 7A. Yeah. Um, if the word ensure could be replaced with the word encouraged. Sure. So uh, is there a uh, someone to second that amendment? Uh, Councillor Lawrence, you seconded the motion, so you can't second the amendment. Is there someone, Councillor Marshall? Thank you. So, uh, Councillor Gatchmarish, would you like to speak on the amendment? I will briefly. Um, I think if we are actively encouraging them to master plan the site, which is so critically important, we want to make sure that the access can be located preferably on Buckley Street, but considering the current plan and the master plan together, encourage makes more sense than ensure. Thank you, Councillor Gauchimirici. Councillor Marshall? I should be used to this by now. Um, no, but that sums it up perfectly. Thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak on the amendment that Councillor Gauchimirici has put forward? Councillor Cusack. Um, I'm quite happy to accept the uh, amendment. I've I've had a, a couple of seconds to think about it. Um, it's possibly the whole seven A is superfluous, but uh, because it was it reflects uh, thinking when we're talking about a stage project, not a concurrent project. Um, but the notion of encouraging rather than ensuring is uh, a critical one. So I'm mm. happy to go with that amendment. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Would anyone else like to speak on the amendment? No, I will put just the amendment to the vote. All those in favour? Um, all those, sorry, Councillor Sipek, you're for the amendment? Yes, so the amendment is carried unanimously. So that is now the substantive. So now we'll go back to the substantive motion. Councillor Gauch Marici, would you like to speak on the substantive motion? Um, I will very, very briefly. I know that um, a significant depth of the concerns has been covered by the other councillors already. Um, I think for me, the really critical part here, as the other councillors have alluded to, and if you consider the number of objections that have come through on this matter, the idea that a school in this day and age that forward plans and does strategic planning couldn't have a master plan in place, I find... Um, phenomenal and I'm a former St Columbus girl I know the school well and I certainly think that um, if they 20 years ago when I went there had predicted where they would be now that may have changed a bit but that's not an excuse not to master plan every sensible business master plans every single institution that we have should master plan if they don't already um, and there's a number of great examples of master plans from other schools locally so for me, the provision of a sensible, thought out and thorough master plan is so incredibly important to this going forward. So um, no objection to the amendments and thank you for put, popping them in because they're quite sensible. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gauch Marici. Would any other councillor like to speak on this item? No, um, Councillor Cusa. Um, as there was an amendment passed, there's no right of reply. So I will put that to the vote. Um, all those in favour? All those against? Okay, all those in favour? 
Councillor Gatchmo Ricci, Councillor Byrne, Councillor Cusack, Councillor Lawrence, all those against? Councillor Sharp, Councillor Sipek, Councillor Marshall, Councillor Nation. That motion is carried um, on the Mayor's casting vote. Item 10.4 on the agenda is neighbourhood plans and implementation of the reformed residential zones. Councillors, do I have a motion? I have an alternative motion, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Sorry, I just need one second. Sorry, okay, hang on. Um, recommendation. A recommendation that council resolves to A, commence the first, first tranche of neighbourhood plans in order to implement the MV 2040 strategy from a strategic land use perspective and implement the reformed residential zones. B, note the first tranche of neighbourhood plans will include the Airport West area, uh, Airport West neighbourhood only. Point C, receive a future report in relation to the draft neighbourhood plans for Airport West, seeking endorsement of the, of the plan for the purpose of informal community consultation. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Nation. Councillor Sharp, would you like to speak to the motion? Madam Mayor, I'm uh, moving this alternative, which effectively excludes North Eston from the proposed motion put forward. Um, there are a number of reasons for this, and I'll quickly just explain. Uh, North Eston in, in MV 2040 extends from Keeler Road, uh, right up from Steeles Creek, right the entire length of Keeler Road down to Mount Alexander Road in North Essendon. This area is vastly different from the area of Airport West. And only six or seven years ago, I'm sure many other councillors remember, um, North Essendon residents were in effectively for their fight, the fight of their lives when the Keeler Road structure plan was developed. Um, I was heavily involved as were other councillors in this process. And to tell you the truth, it feels like only yesterday that this all happened along um, that corridor. And I must admit that I'm still scarred from the process as I can assure you many residents are. So um, effectively what was endorsed a few years ago was uh, the Keeler Road structure plan, which covers parts, well, it covers in the length of Keeler Road, parts of um, North Essendon. And um, we also endorsed quite a few years ago along Mount Alexander Road, our um, DD07, which covers that area. So effectively the areas flagged in this report are already covered by strategic plans that we have endorsed not so long ago. Um, I would certainly much prefer for the first lot of neighbourhood zones to be um, uh, looked at upon areas that don't have any current structure plans or DDOs in place. Um, because effectively we've already gone through that process. I know there's another process to go with the neighbourhood zones and I'm not disputing that, but um, there's no, I guess at the end of the day, there's really no comparison at all between the area of Airport West and the area of North Essendon as, as flagged in this report. And I just hope that councillors can support this motion to have North Essendon um, uh, siphoned off at the moment. It will have to go through it at some stage, but not now when it feels like only yesterday that we've just endorsed the Keeler Road Structure Plan and, and the DDOs along Mount Alexander Road that effectively at the moment um, protect and um, designate what type of development we want to see in that area. So there's already strategic plans along that area. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Councillor Nation. Thank you, Mayor. So happy to support um, this alternative. And I think it was about or just over six years ago that we finalised our then proposed residential zones. 
Um, when the state moved from the old zone one, two and three to the neighbourhood residential zone, general residential zone and residential growth zone. Um, it was a long process. Uh, we had over 12 months of consultation and the zones that council resolved to implement um, were 75.5% or put 75.5% of our city in the neighbourhood residential zone. Now, this was in essence to protect our city from inappropriate development in our suburban streets. And the key with this NRZ, which still exists and potentially will be implemented as part of this process, was that it had controls that were mandatory, mandatory, not just preferred. So there's no room in that NRZ for developers to breach or exploit those controls. Um, in response to our proposed zones, the Residential uh, Zone Standing Advisory Committee recommended we undertake further strategic work before the res reformed residential zones were to be implemented. And that was six years ago, and we're just getting the ball rolling again. So I'm very supportive in uh, kick-starting this process, but I guess um, as a councillor and probably several of the other councillors that um, have been on for, for more than a term, um, we do have uh, memories of, of that process and how hard it was to, to both consult with the community, but to also find, um, find a, a happy medium as to how much of the city was to be the neighbourhood residential zone, um, how much was to be the general residential zone and how much would be the growth zone. Um, at the moment, because our zones weren't approved, basically most of the, the council sits as general residential. Um, and in my opinion, that has led to um, some, a, a greater extent of inappropriate development um, in our suburban streets. So that's the real motivation to get the ball rolling on this process. Um, the more we can get restrictive zones where, where they should go, or where relevant, um, then the more we're going to protect the residential amenity of our streets. So happy to support this motion. I completely agree with Councillor Sharp in um, the lack of connection other than a, a tram route between the areas suggested in the officer's um, recommendation. And I just, um, we do have a housing strategy in place, but I, I just really want us to do this process properly and I think if we just focus on that airport west zone um, and just one at a time and we get it right and then move on to our next neighbourhood because it's something that we will probably only do once, although it is the second time, but um, that if it needs to get done properly, um, we need to get the right controls in place in the right areas. Um, and so let's get the ball rolling, but I completely agree, just one neighbourhood to start with um, and then go from there. Thank you, Councillor Nation. Would any other councillor like to speak on this motion? Councillor Marshall. Uh, look, this is actually a really difficult decision because there are pros and cons of carving a neighbourhood out of this approach. Um, I agree wholeheartedly with what Councillor Sharper said in, and Council Nation repeated in relation to the connection between these particular neighbourhoods. Um, but I think it's important to keep in mind that we're looking at residential zoning, not commercial zoning, which is what the structure plan covers. And the structure plan in North Essendon is a very linear model intentionally. Uh, so what that's done is while it's dealt with the commercial areas, it hasn't dealt with all of the properties that sit behind. And, you know, look, these are difficult processes and they will be difficult for every single neighbourhood that we go through. Um, they will probably be slightly less difficult now we're going through the heritage work, uh, we've got MB 2040 play in place and a lot of work that we just didn't have last time around and that was the big flaw we had, um, that none of the strategic work that should have been done had been done. Uh, but I suppose the difficulty is we've got people who do want us to try and implement zones and so if we're saying, well, we're not going to start that for your neighbourhood for a period of time in a part of Mooney Valley that actually has a lot of high quality homes that really um, I'd be keen to look at protecting. Uh, again, that's the, the negative of not doing this process now and to delaying it. So um, look, it's, 
it's a really difficult one because I absolutely, we've all been there. None of these processes were pleasant at all. Um, the fact that there are structure plans in place, no doubt they'll be considered as part of this, but in some ways that is ticking off part of that work that needs to be done. And I'd say the same with Airport West, obviously their structure, structure plan is significantly out of date. Uh, so that's the, the challenge and I can see why officers have tried to get some synergies around um, some efficiencies with uh, our consultants and all of that, that type of thing that are involved in these processes. But I just worry that if we delay it too long, um, we'll be criticised for not acting. And so it's a really difficult one. And it is, and I understand why Councillor Sharp has moved the motion, but I also very much understand that we've had residents saying to us, implement the zones. So that's the, the challenge that we've got with this particular situation. Thank you, Councillor Marshall. Would any other councillor, Councillor um, Sipek? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I totally agree with what uh, Councillor Sharp said to do it neighbourhood neighbourhood by neighbourhood. But um, I must uh, have to now stand up for Airport West. There is a lot of connection between Airport West and North Essendon, not only just a tram line, but everyone who lives in both suburbs um, shop in the same area. Their children go to probably similar schools in the area. They all dine in the same areas. They go to restaurants in the same areas. They order their, order their takeaway food from the same areas. So there is a lot of connection between Airport West and North Essendon. So like I said, I'm happy to support your motion, Councillor Sharp, but I just wanted to stand up and defend Airport West. Thank you, Councillor Sipek. Any other councillor like to speak on this motion? Councillor Lawrence. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I do support the, uh, the motion. Um, as this is the first trial of this neighbourhood plan um, that's been proposed by our planning department, I don't see personally um, lumping Airport West area with the Kula Road North Essendon area as a natural synergy. I, I think that's, that's a, a, certainly a, um, from where I sit, um, totally out of place. It, the, the, the beauty of what they're trying to do here is most, make most appropriate land use and development controls in, in place for each area, not lumping everything together. I don't agree with the report where it, it actually says it's a logical inclusion. Um, I don't know where they um, kind of that uh, chain of thought. Um, it's, it's certainly um, not a logical conclusion from where I sit. Um, Airport West is a, a very different area to North Essendon, um, and I, I, I would not denigrate either area. Um, having run a business in Airport West for about 30 years, um, and also lived and uh, done business in North Essendon for a long time, um, both as Councillor uh, Sipek alluded to for for restaurant trade and, and, and other um, uh, other matters, be they financial or otherwise. Each area has its own separate uh, appeal, but they don't um, necessarily logically go together as, as pointed out in the, in the report. So um, I think um, maybe it, for, for ease of, of doing this, uh, this um, neighbourhood planning um, process, it was, it was simpler to do it that way, but I don't think it's, it's actually a logical fit as, uh, as the report points out. So I do support Councillor Sharp's uh, uh, alternative motion on this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Any other councillor on this? Councillor Cusack. Um, I suppose I have a, a, a concern that um, is to try to look into the crystal ball about what neighbourhoods might look like and how they and how they change over time and what council's potential to influence that is, is that uh, there is a there is a, a logic um, in keeping the two connected. Uh, I understand that the pressures right now for people who see things in a in the notion, in the place where they want to stay comfortable and assume that nothing is going to change. 
But we do know that there is extraordinary pressures coming into areas around North Essendon and leading up into Airport West, where the the cord that uh, joins them that uh, Councillor Sipek uh, referred to will actually only grow stronger. The that Airport West will change in character, and there will be over time, I would argue, um, some greater opportunities to create the synergies between the two areas and um, and that there is a potential to lose that op that that link uh, idea there is a potential to lose the a cohesive and comprehensive way of addressing all of those other uh, development and and, uh, and uh, future future uh, building matters uh, that so that they link to both areas. Councillor Sharp is quite right. She pointed to the DDOs and so on like that. But um, Airport West will will actually have an impact at some way, shape, or form on uh, North Essendon. If uh, if it if it does uh, if it does, I'm just trying to say. I'm, I suppose I'm trying to think in that pros and cons area that where Councillor uh, uh, Marshall was. And it seems to me that there is uh, some definite pros that haven't necessarily been considered because we're not thinking about the long term. And so I have, uh, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to with your motion, Councillor Sharp. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting very much on the, on the fence, but I am trying to think for a future and, uh, and the connectivity that uh, Councillor Sipek pointed out is uh, definitely there and very, very true. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Councillor Gacciarucci, did I see your hand go up? Yes. You did. Um, this is a really tr tricky one for me because I certainly support Councillor Sharp's comments and I certainly see the lack of somewhat a clear linkage the other half of me sits there and I know that when I, I was portfolio chair for 2040 and every single one of those portfolio committee meetings and feedback sessions we went through, everyone was so excited about the neighbourhood planning stage and wanted that piece of work to start. So they had some real concrete guidelines around their neighbourhoods and how that would interact going forward. So I'm not adverse to supporting Councillor Sharp's plan, um, but it would be very much with the caveat that we would then have a really clearly articulated timeline for when the rest of the neighbourhoods will be done um, in order so that they are still in line to get done and to get done soon. Um, I have no problem with waiting for Airport West to be done first so that we can get an understanding of the bits that work and the bits that don't and how we um, apply that going forward. Um, but I would hate for us to lose the good work and the traction that's occurred and the real interest and desire of our community to have that neighbourhood planning done, so. Thank you, Councillor Gauchimarici. Well, I believe everyone has spoken. Councillor Sharp, would you like to close? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I should clarify um, just to... Um, no, uh, Councillor Sipek's comments. My comparison between Airport West and North Essendon is basically to do with the zoning <laughs> because North Essendon, um, as allocated in MB 2040, where uh, we don't have any real industrial, we don't have the airport hangars, housing machinery and housing the big industrial um, sites that exist in Airport West. So that's really what I was um, intending on in my comparison. There are some bulkier good sites up the top end of Kilo Road, but certainly nothing like the industry that's that's in, uh, in Airport West. And I note from um, discussions with planners that put this report up, um, one of the main reasons about uh, including Essendon North was to look at a site on Kilo Road for potential rezoning. Um, so to my mind, it's as if we're, you know, Essendon North is sacrificial lambs just for one site on Keeler Road to be investigated. So I, 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 I don't, I just don't agree with this uh, proposal at this stage, as I stated. Obviously, all of our neighbourhoods are going to have to be incorporated in these neighbourhood plans at some stage, but considering the time, work, 
uh, all the, the huge process that went above and beyond, uh, just like I said, it feels like yesterday regarding Keeler Road. And the thing is with this uh, location where SNL says uh, earmarked in MB24, it goes right down to Cliff Allison Reserve in North Essendon. I mean, it makes no sense. And I'm not, I cannot justify putting the residents through this process again. We've been there, we've done it. I know it's going to happen, have to happen in the future but not now when we already have our strategic justification. And noting that there was a comment about looking at our, our uh, residential areas, yes, but predominantly um, these neighbourhood plans will also be looking at all the other zones as well. And not, it's not just the general residential zone, it's all the zones. So um, I do hope councillors can see uh, fit to support this. Obviously it is a process and it's a going to be a long process and it is a process that we're going to have to apply to all of our 13 neighbourhoods and Essen North is one of those neighbourhoods but like I said just please not now not when we've already got DDOs and strategic plans in place for this area it's not just I don't believe it's justified or warranted I'm losing my voice thank you thank you Councillor Sharp I'll put that to the vote all those in favour all those against? All those in favour? Councillor Gatch, Marici, Councillor Sharp, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Nation. All those against? Councillor Byrne, Councillor Cusack, Councillor Marshall, Councillor Sipek. Um, the motion is lost on the casting vote of the Mayor. And there was no motion to foreshadow this. So we will move on to item 10.5 on the agenda, which is Buckley Street level crossing removal, post opening traffic study and response to petitions. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Lawrence? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, I'll just move a motion. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Do I have a seconder? A seconder for this motion, Councillor Cusack. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Councillor Lawrence, would you like to speak on the item? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. If the report uh, essentially um, details the work that uh, has been carried out for the Parkley Street level crossing and the issues that still remain um, and, and are still being sorted out. The proposal uh, looks at the traffic lights at St Columbus and the need for traffic flow um, assessment and possibly in my opinion the implications of um, the installation of those um, the traffic light situation at St Columbus, uh, particularly of the new design of Buckley Street. There's also the um, proposition of uh, two road humps in Sherbourne Street. Um, however, the report uh, clearly states that these are probably not adequate, safe or sensible solutions to the street's um, safety and traffic issues. The, there are issues with Sherbourne Street and I'll, I'll just briefly run through a few of those. Um, one, it's a, a very narrow street and um, accidents are apparently, from what the residents tell me, are, are happening uh, reasonably frequently down there. The safety issues with the school students walking along here daily, um, there's uh, essentially, Chevron Street's a, a one-lane street. It's not a very wide street at all. Um, and that, that in itself poses problems. The footpaths on the street are narrow and they're not continuous. Um, and, and the whole street um, for pedestrians uh, are often forced to actually walk on the street itself um, in some spots because the footpath isn't actually there. Um, for example, there's no footpath uh, where the car park um, that uh, the metro train commuters use uh, and walk on that street to get to the station. So they're actually walking on the street, it's a two-way street, cars come in both directions. Um, it's a dangerous situation. It's also dangerous now that the, the there is an increase in, in 
school traffic and pedestrians and cyclists probably using the street, but also with the increase in traffic in both directions, it, it really makes for a dangerous and unsafe situation. Um, moving on, the, uh, the investigation uh, needs to be looking at the speeding and the, and the dangerous driving issues that uh, we move away from Sherbrooke Street, but in McPhail Street, where the, that's the first right turn as you come off the um, uh, Buckley Street, if you come if you're heading west, um, you can turn right into McPhail Street. But uh, as residents down that street tell me that uh, there's uh, considerable speeding that goes on down there, hoon driving and the rest, um, and it is a dangerous situation for the residents of that street. So again, that needs to be tidied up and uh, we're looking, how I believe, at a couple of speed humps on that street. Um, council is still waiting on the traffic data for this area now. This has been an ongoing uh, saga and, and one that uh, really should have been cleared up a long time ago. The uh, Department of Transport is essentially um, coming forth with uh, a, a traffic data um, survey that has been done. But we're not getting that 12 months into waiting, as we've been, and we're still waiting on it. So um, there needs to be some further um, movement on that department. Um, other information from the Department of Transport, including um, this full compensation that Council should be getting for all the um, uh, ameliorating traffic conditions that the Council has, has sorted out whilst the, um, or even after the LXRP works in the area has been completed. Um, and, and also, uh, again, the state government supplying the post-project monitoring study, which uh, again we haven't seen. I guess the, the bottom line here is that the community of Essendon and, and uh, the rest of the Essendon uh, deserves this information as entitled to transparent government information that should have been forthcoming some time ago, and we're still waiting on it. Um, and I don't think um, that uh, the Five thousand odd that uh, um, is being offered from the state government in, in, in return for potential information, which is really good way to be doing business with the council with one government at any level. So um, uh, one doesn't uh, necessarily lead to the other. It should all be working as a, a well-oiled machine at local government level and state government level. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Cusack. Councillor Cusack? Oh, yep. uh, the unmute wouldn't unmute, and I'm mm -hmm. sure that a lot of people are very happy with that. But um, I'll second this motion on the basis of, uh, I suppose that, first of all, we owe uh, a number of people who have signed petitions an explanation of what has occurred in respect of their petitions and, uh, and where we're up to. Uh, it doesn't make a very pretty read. We've uh, we've not got anywhere with um, with the uh, with the uh, the road authority over the um, median strip in Buckley Street. We've uh, we've still, although we've got an announcement, hopefully around uh, works for the uh, lights at um, at uh, near St Columbus. We'll be uh, looking forward to seeing that happen when it does happen. Um, we've also uh, got a number of other critical issues in respect of Sherbourne, as uh, Councillor um, Lawrence has pointed out, and also the issues around MacPhail. Uh, these, and certainly the MacPhail one, needs more more consideration and more work done. Clearly, to get some. Uh, uh, consensus amongst the uh, community down there about what is the most sensible and, op and opportune way to go forward. The uh, the issue that I have arrived on when looking at this uh, uh, um, uh, paper was around the 165,000 bucks and the uh, and the intransigence of the LXRP over uh, providing us with that with any more money. And then, secondly, tying it to uh, to the um, information about the uh, traffic movements. So, if we don't take the 165, or we keep arguing for more, we won't get the uh, 
the other. So I suppose what the officers are recommending is uh, we have to take some lumps on this one. So yeah, we'll grab the 165. We hope that the uh, traffic information is worthwhile, but we're um, continuing to uh, advocate to uh, Jacinta Allen, the Minister for Transport and Infrastructure and uh, the Secretary of that department to, um, to look at how uh, we might be able to defray costs that come to council as a result of uh, having to implement traffic measures where, they've only, where we've only got 165,000 bucks. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Would any other councillor like to speak on this? Councillor Gatch Marucci. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, 12 months ago, even earlier um, to now, I personally moved a number of these petitions. Um, the Crossing Supervisor in addition identified a number of these concerns. For me, I can't support this motion, not because I'm not happy to see the outcomes of the petitions and not because I, I don't want the petitioners to receive their responses. I think that's critically important to us. I can't support this motion just because for me to stand up and say we're happy to take a quarter of the cost that we've identified it will take to rectify the issues that we do know about is not okay in my books. Um, I went back through all my notes and in 2017 we requested the traffic reporting and the detailed response to how they would be resolved. Um, two years ago in February of 2018 um, what one of the motions that we moved like my my literal speech I pulled up from that night and I said I can't put my hand on my heart and tell my community that we do understand what's being proposed to them or that we do understand the consequences and impact in our community or that we do fully understand how those consequences and impact can and will be mitigated because we don't um, and at the time, one of the concerns we raised was that the maps concentrated on the areas directly adjoining the crossing and didn't show the significant traffic movements that would occur in Leslie, Stanley and Sherborne Street patch, that it didn't consider the intersections and roads that were outside their scope of work. And the time we flagged these concerns um, that there was miscommunication, misinformation um, and elements of misleading because in all of those opportunities in the last six months back in 2018, that to rectify that misinformation and provide the documentation they had been requested back then, they had been requested those documentation by council, by community and those who submitted so many FOIs out of frustration and that relevant information was never provided. And, and for me to stand here another two years later and, and we're being told you can take this sum of money to receive a traffic report that you should rightfully receive anyway I just can't put my hand on my heart and support this motion. Um, the works package that we had identified included threshold treatments that haven't been funded at all. Um, they've funded a few speed humps. Um, and, and it clearly articulates in the report that the, the speed humps do nothing for the additional traffic volumes or community safety. And it means that that money is there left for us to rectify. I don't see anything in our report that is about advocating to just interrelate and is about us trying to receive the additional funding. It clearly says that we will fund everything over the 165000 from our own money. And I have a problem with that. Um, so for me, you then add on top of that operational maintenance costs for pocket parks and the Mount Road car park. I just can't support this motion, but I am pleased that the petitioners who worked so hard to raise their concerns with us will get a response. Thank you, Councillor Gatch Marucci. Any other councillor on this motion? Councillor Nation. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And it, it really is a... Uh, a bizarre set of circumstances which is outlined in the report where our traffic and transport department has assessed the post project monitoring study has has seen there is clearly some critical information that is being withheld or, or missing um, peak hour vehicle turning movement counts, 24 hour counts, including hourly volumes, speed data, vehicle classification and road safety audits. 
it's so much information that our own traffic and transport department cannot even assess the information that's being given to us. And then to have the LXRP say to us, you can only have this information that we are withholding um, if you accept our offer of $165,000. It, it is just, uh, it's just mind boggling that that is a, a government department is speaking to what in essence should be a partner in this project in that manner, rather than it being a collaborative approach. And it really, um, it's really indicative of the entire project that council has not been engaged properly, has not been consulted properly, the residents have not been consulted properly. Um, and in my view, the sheer arrogance of that statement, we will, we will give you that missing information if you accept our poultry offer $165,000. It just, it really just speaks to this entire project in general. Um, I, I note the, and I, I thank the petitioners um, and the numerous petitioners that have submitted petitions to council. And I do note the importance as Councillor Gaucho Marici has said of getting back to them. Um, and I also note that our hands are somewhat tied by the Local Government Act um, as outlined in the report, um, in particular what uh, is not within our remitter under the Act um, uh, in 3.13 in the report. Um, in regards to the reverting of Sherbourne Street, the council or council must not exercise power unless it is considered a report from the head of transport for Victoria concerning the exercise of power. So I understand um, particularly how there's not a lot we can do um, except for smaller works, but uh, this, yeah, this report, um, I had to read it twice initially when it was given to us to actually, um, actually work out that what it says is what it says. Um, it's deeply disturbing. Um, and I do have some grave reservations about accepting um, that money on the basis of uh, doing so just to be partners in the project and to get the data that we should have already been given. Thank you, Councillor Nation. Would any other councillor like to speak on this item? Councillor Sharp. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just have, um, I was contacted by a resident and um, I informed him that I could read his statement out just quickly um, in regards to this agenda item. Um, now, when I say, obviously, I, it's not me, this is coming from the resident, but he would just like to add that the large increase in traffic in Sherbourne Street due to the Alex RP removing the no entry restriction from Buckley Street has caused a lot of congestion and traffic flow problems within the street. As the street is so narrow and now busy, cars are forced up onto footpaths and nature strips regularly and often close to students, cyclists and pedestrians. Cars often reverse dangerously to avoid incoming traffic or speed to reach an opening in the street before incoming traffic arrives. I see this daily due to, the, due to the nature of the street. It is narrow, bends, has cars parked along both sides, poor visibility, and now has a high volume of, traf of through traffic. I've already been hit by a car while reversing out of my driveway, driveway and I have heard of at least two other cases of cars being hit. Uh, Sherbourne Street is essentially one lane street as cars pass, park along the east side and it is narrow, low visibility and too many young school children, pedestrians, commuters and cyclists to handle safe, to handle, safely handle this large increase in traffic volume and speed. Um, just talks also about the footpaths being too small and uh, would like to see the reinstatement of the no entry restriction from Buckley Street. Um, and which would allow for a footpath to connect the car parks and train station and bus stops. So concurring what other councillors have, have said, I just made that commitment to that resident to read um, that part of his statement out. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Any other councillor like to speak on this item? No, uh, Councillor Lawrence, would you like to close? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. 
Um, I hope everyone can hear me clearly. Uh, look, this is a, um, a tricky situation and uh, I certainly, having uh, had some um, concerns previously about the uh, Buckley Street level crossing removal and, and consequen consequential work, um, if we've learned something from the LXRA Buckley Street works um, is we haven't got what we would have liked um, and that's a fait accompli where the, the horse has bolted three years later or whatever it is two years later we still haven't got a report we still haven't got a, a traffic management uh, um, a tra traffic movement uh, report and we're, we're still waiting uh, I guess we will not get everything so if 100% of nothing is nothing then um, 165,000 plus a report on traffic movement is something. And uh, we've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And uh, I guess at the end of the day, the state government's got a bigger bigger um, ax to grind than, than, than what we can grind. And uh, we, we'll end up just in the same position. Um, sure, we can stand on our soapbox and, and say that uh, we, we aren't getting what we we want, but at least we will get something. And uh, I do take the report's um, uh, uh, comment that, um, sorry, I've just lost where I was, um, that, uh, and, and it's point um, H in the recommendation, um, that council accepts the initial base offer, the initial base offer, I might add, of 165,500 as a contribution towards rectification of deflected transport issues in the local uh, road network, providing provided all the critical information missing from the post-project monitoring study be provided. So we're not just getting snippets, we're getting provided all the critical information is provided. And, and that's, I guess, um, a comfort in, in, in a small way. Um, I don't know whether the LXRA, uh, sorry, the LXRP will um, fix the Sherbourne Street situation, and I think ultimately um, it'll probably come down to council as to as to the uh, looking after the concerns of residents in that street. Um, I think uh, once uh, the crossing uh, in front of St Columbus is completed, then um, that that might be the uh, the uh, the last we see of them um, would be my guess. Um, I would like to think they would do more, and um, I, I can only um, hope that councils uh, um, complaining and uh, um, uh, pointing out that uh, the uh, problems in that stretch between, um, uh, I think it was Street, um, anyway, the, the first uh, 200 metres of Sherborne Street from Buckley Street could be adjusted, would be a good thing. That's pretty much all, all I've got to say on that matter. and. Um, uh, it's, it's a difficult situation. I feel for the residents. I understand the situation. Um, if we can get some something out of this, um, including the uh, 165,500, then uh, I guess um, it's, it's somewhere to start. You've got to be a realist in these things. Um, and uh, that's what I try to be. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? Okay, all those in favour? Councillor Byrne, Councillor Cusack, Councillor Marshall, Councillor Sharp, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Sipek, all those against? Councillor Gatch Marici, Councillor Nation, that motion is carried. Item 10.6 on the agenda tonight is the response to the petition Traffic and Parking Management on Albion Street, Essendon. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Sharp. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Happy to move the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. And a seconder, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Sharp, would you like to speak on the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I am having problems with my iPad tonight and actually finding things. But um, 
this uh, issue for parking in Albion Street came to us by a petition. Um, as you'll see from the report, we've certainly done a lot of uh, works down in Albion Street over the past uh, number of years, um, including zebra crossings and um, uh, bus zones and the rest of it. So um, as it stands, this recommendation is to um, advise um, the petitioners of uh, their requests um, regarding the bus stop locations, but to maintain the existing parking restrictions on Albion Street, um, subject to the review of the bus stops by the Department of Transport, um, but certainly to maintain the existing pedestrian crossings with flashing lights. Um, the pedestrian crossing was actually installed way even before I uh, became a councillor and I remember reading about that issue in the paper so it was certainly a huge issue at the time all those years ago so i um, happy to move this recommendation which pretty much keeps the uh, status quo regarding that. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Sharp. Councillor Lawrence. Uh, thanks Madam Mayor. Look I generally concur with uh, what um, Councillor Sharp has said. Um, I guess the removal of the bus stops um, at uh, bus stops 10741 and 10542 is a Department of Transport decision. Uh, we can only suggest that um, something be done there um, to uh, move them, um, but uh, ultimately uh, the um, maintain the existing uh, car parking as it is, uh, is the status quo is what the council officers are saying. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Any other councillor would like to speak on 10.6? No, I will put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. Item 10.7 on the agenda is the response to the petition traffic speeding along Phillip Road, Keel or East. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Um Yes, I'm happy to move uh, the officer's recommendation, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sipek. And do I have a seconder? Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Sipek, would you like to speak on the motion? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this, this is uh, pretty very uh, simplistic. Uh, we had a request from uh, the resident along Phillips Street or in the neighbouring area about uh, having a look at uh, different remunerations uh, in regards to the traffic in Phillips Street. And our officers came back after doing uh, a, com a complete sort of uh, study and survey and their recommendation was not to uh, in put in a roundabout. Thank you, Councillor Sipek. Councillor Lawrence. Uh, thanks, Madam Mayor. Look, I, I pretty much concur with what uh, Councillor Sipek said. I don't think there's much more needs to be added. The, the report's fairly self-explanatory. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Would any other council like to speak on this item? I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. Item 10.8 on the agenda is the response to petition Columban Avenue, Strathmore. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Gatchamarici. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I actually have an alternate motion um, that council resolves to A, request the CEO undertake a survey of residents of Columban Avenue to ascertain support for the introduction of four hour parking limits on one side of the street and B request that the results of this survey be provided through to council through a report once completed. Thank you Councillor Gatchamarici. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Sharp. Councillor Gatchamarici. Thank you Madam Mayor. Um, this petition came to us through a number of residents during 2019 um, we received a number of phone calls and emails in addition to the petitions. Um, the report itself is fairly explanatory about the statistics, but what has since been confirmed, um, which is 
that the approximately two, 7.2 metres wide in the report is that the road widths are actually between 7 metres, 7.1 metres and 7.2 metres at various points in the road. Um, so under the road management policy, the roads up to 7.2 would only have parking on one side of the streets. Um, the occupancy data obviously doesn't suggest having only one side of the street, but the residents' feedback does support the need to ensure that there is movement occurring during the day so that there's not blockages if um, cars either side are all day if someone's at the train station or the like and is blocked through. Um, so for this reason, the alternate motion refers consideration back to the residents about having one side as four-hour permit parking so that there's some movement during the day um, and reflects their original request. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gauchmarici. Councillor Sharp. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Happy to support Councillor Gatchimarichi's alternative. Obviously, we're going out for further consultation, so that is always worthwhile and warranted and happy to support. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Any other councillor on this item? Councillor Lawrence? Uh, thanks, Madam Mayor. Look, uh, yes, I certainly agree with uh, my fellow ward councillors on this one. Um, uh, if there wasn't an alternative put up, I would certainly be voting against the, um, the original report. Uh, there's certainly a need in this street because a lot of the uh, teachers and uh, even possibly commuters to Strathmore Station park in the street uh, all day um, because it's all day parking and we need some parking restrictions to A, move these on and, and allow residents to actually park in their own street. So, yep, good move. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Any other councillor? Okay, I will put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. Item 10.9 on the agenda is the proposed road discontinuance and sale of land from right of way and road reserve abutting rear of 20 Clarence Street, Flemington. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Nation. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'll move a motion in the form of the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Nation. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Marshall. Thank you, Councillor Marshall. Councillor Nation, would you like to speak on the item? Uh, yeah, just briefly. So this report relates to um, a proposed road discontinuance. Um, it abuts 20 Clarence Street, Flemington. Um, at a meeting uh, earlier this year, 11th of February, um, we moved a motion to, um, uh, to proceed with a road, proposed road discontinuance. That kickstarted a process where we call on submissions uh, for those people either in favour or against and to present to a section 223 um, committee. Uh, that wasn't required because we received no submissions in favour or to objecting, um, which is a sign that the officer recommends to proceed with the road discontinuance. So um, there's not much, it's not a controversial road discontinuance at all. It's um, just about getting a, a small portion to be included in with an existing property within their title boundaries. So um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nation. Councillor Marshall. Uh, no, nothing further to add. Thank you. Any other councillor? I will put that to the vote. All those in favour? Is carried unanimously. Item 10.10 .10 on the agenda is proposed discontinuance and sale of land from Road Reserve abutting 8 and 6 South Road Airport West. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Sipek? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. This is uh, once again also surplus land that's not required by Mooney Valley and it'll be putting up for sale and happy to move the officer's recommendation. So you're moving the officer's recommendation. Thank you. And do I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Lawrence. Thank you. Councillor Sipek, would you like to speak on the motion? I think it's very self-explanatory. It's just a sale of uh, surplus land. 
Thank you, Councillor Sipek. Councillor Lawrence? Uh, nothing further to add. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Would any other councillor like to speak on this item? No, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. Item 10.11 is a proposed discontinuance and sale of land from right of way abutting 22 Church and 35 and 37 Bryan Street, Flemington. Councillors, I have a motion. Councillor Nation. Uh, move a motion in the form of the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Nation. And a seconder. Councillor Cusack. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Councillor Nation, would you like to speak on this item? Uh, just very briefly, and I think the theme of tonight is road discontinuances and responses to petitions, as that's uh, all we've heard from the in the past five or six reports. Um, like the previous couple of reports, this uh, relates to a road discontinuance. Um, it abuts 22 Church Street in Flemington and 35 and 37 Bryant Street. So um, we moved a motion at a previous meeting of council to kickstart the process of selling this land, incorporating it into existing titles of other property or the property owners that abut this parcel. Um, as per the previous couple of reports, no submissions were received under section 223. Um, so as per the officer's recommendation, um, I uh, would resolve to discontinue the road as per the report. Thank you, Councillor Nation. Councillor Cusack? Nothing much to add on that, uh, Mayor, except to say that uh, I note that there's an easement uh, that needs to be addressed and, uh, and that's mentioned in the officer's report and I'm sure will be, uh, will be uh, physically addressed when the uh, discontinuance occurs. Okay, thank, you. thank you, Councillor Cusack. Any other councillor? No, I will put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. Item 10.12 on the agenda is councillor expenses, training and development. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Marshall? Uh, yes, I'd like to move a motion in the form of the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Marshall. And a seconder? Councillor Seifert. Councillor Marshall, would you like to speak on the item? Uh, only to say that it's taken four years, but I think we might finally be here, uh, that everything is has been disclosed now, everything's been caught up, corrected, uh, as was intended all that time ago. So hopefully now that we've got it very clear, we can show how transparent we are as a council around our expenditure uh, and going forward, it will provide a good plat platform for the next council um, to make sure Again, that all of its expenditure is open to public scrutiny and uh, I'm pleased that we are finally here. Thank you, Councillor Marshall. Councillor Sipek. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just reiterate what Councillor Marshall said. It's, uh, it has taken us um, quite a number of years to get to this place of transparency. Um, I'm very, very comfortable with the transparency, very comfortable with how it's being reported. Um, and our audit committee is also very comfortable with it as well too. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sipek. Any other councillor like to speak on this item? Councillor Cusack? Uh, just a point of personal clarification, uh, because you'll see uh, if you look at the table that uh, no uh, money was expended on training me. Uh, I have taken. I have not. It's not that I have not wanted to take the opportunity to avail myself of training that's provided in the local government sector. I've found that um, I've been able to access a lot of training via my work, and uh, and that has been um, that has supplemented a lot of what I know and do. The uh, there is also a number of informal opportunities for learning and so on like that in council life, which I've availed myself of. I just want to make a comment though, that the uh, two critical providers of training for councillors um, have 
uh, the, both the Municipal Association of Victoria and the Victorian Local Governance Association. And um, I've been and spent a long time uh, looking at their training courses, the opportunities to avail myself of those. And I've been constantly blocked by the inflexibility and the incapacity of those organisations to provide any sort of training that is relevant to people in the 21st century, uh, in the sense of how it's delivered, how it's um, and how it's recorded, and how it is uh, developed by themselves in a bubble uh, far away from what the needs are of individual councillors who are alive and walking on Mother Earth. And so I have, um, I, I have not availed myself of that sort of stuff. And the one time I stuck up my hand in recent, in the last 12 months to do it, um, twice I was accepted onto the course um, and twice the course was canceled. And uh, I think there was just a lack of, um, lack of uh, foresight by uh, the trainer involved in that time. Uh, and the way they could have looked at other options uh, didn't seem to uh, occur to them. And having spent uh, most of my career in the world of vocational education and training, working in, uh, in prison systems and, the, uh, and young offenders, but also very, very much in the TAFE sector uh, and having devised and designed and described uh, curriculum over many years, uh, I've been astounded by the lack of capacity in there. So anyway, uh, that's a beef. Uh, I think it's uh, something that uh, a future council might like to actually take up uh, hard with, uh, the, with both the MAV and Victorian Local Governance Association. I think that um, maybe councils could look uh, at, at their buying power and think about going offshore away from those organisations and doing something uh, in other places. And uh, I certainly subscribe to a number of uh, alternative options and, uh, and, and do so uh, because they're both relevant and, uh, and uh, much more exciting. And, uh, and the way they deliver is much, uh, as I said, much more uh, on them, uh, up to speed with what the big demands are. And uh, I'd be happy to share that with those with my fellow councillors. And uh, if anybody from the MAV or uh, Victorian Local Governance is listening, I'll be happy to share that with you too. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Any other councillor? No, I will put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. Item 10.13 on the agenda is the Assemblies of Councillors. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Lawrence? Uh, just the uh, move the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. And a seconder? Councillor Gacchimarici. Councillor Lawrence, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, it's pretty much procedural, this, um, just uh, detailing when and where everybody appeared. Um, nothing more to really say about it. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Gatch Marici. No? Any other councillor? I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? Is carried unanimously. Item 11 on the agenda is notices of motion and we don't have any tonight. However, item 12 on the agenda is urgent business. Councillors, do we have any urgent business for tonight? No urgent business. Item 13 on the agenda is delegates report. Does anyone, would anyone like to report anything as a delegate? No. And item 14 is confidential reports and we don't have any confidential reports. Therefore, we're up to the closing of the meeting. Um, so thank you to everyone who's been watching on live streaming. Thank you for your interest and we'll see you in a fortnight's time. Don't forget to put in a budget submission if you wish, which is still open. Good night.
See you later. Close